Hello. In this video, I thought we would um, look at what we're doing in April. It's very early April, and for the seeds that we actually sowed in March, if you've been following us along, they're now ready to pop out into the garden. And at this moment in time, I'm actually planting out some spring onions. And if you just look over there, you can. this is the same variety called Guardsman. Uh, they went in the ground last September and they're ready for us to harvest and we pick some of those when we want an oniony taste. So now it's time to plant on the following crop and these will come ready a little bit later. And you'll probably see as I'm going about and I see little weeds on their way up. I just pick them out of the ground and put them into my bucket. Now these have been multi-sown and they could have up to eight onions in the plug. And by the time we've finished the onions you can see over there which are now ready for us to harvest these are going to be becoming ready for them to harvest. And of course, like most things that you grow yourself, you can choose when you actually want to harvest them. Hello. All right, I've got to get on with planting some things. It's a good girl. So what I'm planting out here is our beetroot. And if you haven't seen our multi-sowing of the beetroot, there is a video available for you to see. And where these needed thinning out, I've thinned them out. And there's no more than five plants now within a plug. And we just pop them into the ground. And as they grow along, we shall harvest the biggest one as it comes ready for harvest. And they're probably going to be ready for harvest around about June time. Now it's a lovely spring day today. And it's hard to believe that only two days ago we had snow, hail, winds, and it really was quite cold. Now the temperature is not huge today, it's probably about 9 degrees. But it's okay to be planting some things out. So I've just finished dibbing those holes. And in here, I'm going to be putting some radish. Now these are radish that we multi-sowed. And again, there could be up to, well... It could be anything from eight to ten. Um, we will have thinned down probably more like six is a great number to have. Um, radish don't occupy a huge amount of space and it's nice when they're picked fairly young anyway. It saves them becoming woody. We are making the most of the space in our garden and these won't get huge flollopy leaves that come over onto the lawn so we can maintain the lawn edges and stop weeds getting into our vegetable beds. As always with fresh plantings, just give them a good drink of water to help them settle into their new homes. I've already done the spring onions and the beetroot that you saw me planting a little earlier. Next, I want to get my parsnips into the ground and we'll pick, pick this up on the camera. But for those of you that haven't grown parsnip seed before, you know, they're like thin little wafers. So it's a good idea to not sow these on a windy day because they will fly about in the wind. The other thing with parsnip that's really important to remember if you've never sown them before 
The other thing to remember with parsnip seed, if you haven't sown parsnips before, is that you do need to use fresh seed every season. They don't store very well at all. I'm aiming to sow three seeds every six inches. So roughly every six inches, three seeds in there. Parsnips can be difficult to germinate. The weather should be favorable for us this week to help them along. And all I shall do is, is once the seedlings are through, I shall thin them to the strongest. So this way by sowing three seeds per station, hopefully at least one, shall emerge. So we've done two rows of parsnip and as I said earlier the seeds are sown at six inch intervals in the rows but I've left 12 inches between the rows. Parsnips at the top at their crown get quite wide so and if you're hoeing and trying to keep weeds down you know they can easily be damaged the crowns of parsnip what we have done is just give them a little bit of water at the seed station to help them on their way and then i'm going to give them a general water over the top of the soil once i've just finished covering these over and as i say i've always found this quite a foolproof way in that if you sow three seeds per station you should be lucky enough at least to get one come through and you know generally two to three and you just need to thin them down to the strongest seedling um, and a bit later on in the month once they've come through um, i'll show you exactly how i do that now if you're wondering what guardsman looks like these are the overwintering ones and they make a lovely onion and they're ready to harvest now and one of the reasons why we uh, like to plant plenty of spring onions um, wherever we have spare space is that you know they, you can use these to cook with and when you grow them like this multi-sown you can see there are six eight onions within a bunch um, and you can take a bunch of them or the biggest ones from each group um, and you can still cook with these and get a lovely onion taste with your food uh, as you know if you've been following our channel during the latter part of March um, about a week or so ago we planted all of our potatoes thankfully none of them are through yet because we don't want them through yet um, as, as I said in that video they're going to be four to five weeks before we see them poking their heads through and by then where we live here in Norfolk in the UK um, the harshest of frost will be over with and in this bed we have our main crop which is Maris Piper um, we've also put some charlotte in and we've also put a first early in called Casablanca which we grew for the first time last year um, and we found that to be a really good potato. Now in the last video that you watched um, you saw us put our peas in the ground and as you can see they've come on leaps and bounds they've been covered and we use these sort of metal supports just to keep the enviromesh off um, the peas so when, it, when we do get the frosts, which we've had over the last couple of three days, um, they're not getting burnt by frost. In the main, peas don't mind frost. I mean, a really, really harsh one is not great for them, but they are a cool weather crop, so they don't particularly mind if there's a bit frosty, a ground frost or something. And uh, yeah, again, they're multi-sown. I've aimed for two peas per station. And... Uh, in the main that's exactly what has come up um, and if you're wondering you know exactly why i've got them covered well we have pigeons <laughs> uh, there's woodland over the back of us and the pigeons will come in and they will take the tops and stunt their growth um, and if you saw one of our videos from last year when we very first started making our our videos and putting them onto youtube um, for the very first time our peas were really really late in harvesting because the pigeons uh, were 
eating the tops out and they just weren't getting tall and so they weren't producing their flowers. We did manage to get over it and get a harvest, but go back and see that video and you'll see exactly what we meant. Um, because we seem to think that it was the way that we created the frame was enabling the pigeons just to actually sit there no matter how tall the peas were getting and to be able to peck away at the tops of them. Now we've got different plans for this year and within the next couple of weeks ago there'll be a video coming out and we'll show you how we're going to support these peas because this is a variety called Alderman and Alderman will grow to two meters or more if you let them keep going. Here we have our broad beans um, they're doing really really well uh, and it's a good job that we did you know support these because um, over the last uh, couple of days ago when we had all that snow and hail and everything it was quite windy and of course broads can flop quite a lot uh, so these are looking really quite good and you can see they already have flowers on them as to whether they'll produce beans from this set of flowers you know we shall see um, because we have had some quite frosty nights um, we had a really good one Friday and into the Saturday and Saturday into today um, so that could disrupt that harvest but they will flower again and they will produce the great thing is they have got flowers on they're looking really healthy um, there is a little thing um, that's called chocolate spot that they can be uh, that they can get and if you look at this particular plant here it actually has a bit of chocolate spot and it doesn't particularly hurt the plant so when you see it don't worry and think you're not going to get anything because you will but it you know if, if it gets really bad it will stunt the plants and set them back and you won't get such a great harvest now particularly why it's only that plant because if you look at the rest of them i don't have it on any of the others they all seem really quite healthy and if you watched our broad bean video when we planted these out back in december um, you'll know that we normally grow the Sutton, which is these ones here, and that's a low-lying variety. Um, they don't get much bigger than sort of 18 inches tall, but they do have a really good crop on them. And we've grown that for some time now, principally because being quite near the coast, um, we do get a lot of winds that swirl about here, um, and, you know, broad beans can be knocked over. Their stems are really quite fragile. But this year I wanted to try a different uh, variety and this is Aqua Dolce. Um, they'll probably grow up to here. So what we have done is put plenty of string about to support these and so far it's working really really well. So a couple of weeks ago we sowed our carrots and they're under this cloche here. They are just beginning to come through. It won't pick it up on the camera right at this moment but they are now starting to push their way through. Um, and as we can clearly define the rows and see it, we'll come back and film that for you um, so you can see exactly what they look like. But yeah, they're doing really, really well. So earlier in the video, you saw me planting out some multi-sown radish, some multi-sown spring onions and some multi-sown beetroot. Now, these are really, really good crops to plant out. And one of the reasons is that we're now into what people call the hungry gap. So there's not much in the garden that can be harvested and we're waiting for things to grow and ready to harvest probably towards late May in the case of broad beans um, and June for everything else. These, these plantings that I've made, so the radish, the spring onions and the beetroot, they only take about eight to 12 weeks in fact, in the case of the radish, they'll probably be ready within the next four weeks for us to be able to pick. And that gives you fresh food to eat while you're waiting for everything else. It takes that little bit longer to come along. So if you do have spaces, you know, where you can tuck things in, then go for things like radish, beetroot, spring onions. They don't take long to produce. In this bed, um, I have just cleared these leeks. Leeks are a lovely vegetable. We've been enjoying these leeks since October of last year, but these are the final harvest. And I needed to clear these because I need to plant out the next succession of calibres. Um, now we have two grandchildren and one of the vegetables they really love to eat is calibres. Um, so 
I always try to make sure that I grow plenty of that. The problem is if you grow them all at the same time, you get all of the heads at the same time. Although you can freeze the calories, and we have indeed done that, it's not quite as good as when you can get the heads lovely and fresh out of the ground. So if you haven't seen the video where we sowed our Savoy cabbage and our calories, um, go back and watch that because I do explain that I sow some seeds now and then at three to four weekly intervals, certainly by the time these went into the ground, I then sow the next lot of seed. And these are going to go in here. I've got some ready now, which are ready to go in the ground. Um, but I have literally just cleared these leeks and I just need to spread my layer of compost over for the coming year. And we'll probably pop those in during the next week. And then once they go in the ground, what I shall then do is start some more seed off for the next eight to go in and so on and so on. So that you can continually be harvesting them fresh from the ground because the one thing with calabrese is, is that once the little flower heads open up, a bit like cauliflower and a bit like sprouting broccoli, then they're not good to eat. Now what I am going to do with these leeks, because leeks actually do freeze quite well. Yes, they do not taste as good when they're pulled fresh out of the ground. Um, but we shall slice these up, put them in a bag and into the freezer so that we can still enjoy leeks as and when we want to over the next few weeks while we're in this hungry gap so we will have a vegetable to eat and here we are at the onion bed so if you remember we did we did a video called first plantings of 2022 and they were the onions that went into the ground as you can see they have been covered by some fleece that's really to keep the cold winds off you know the onions are not particularly affected by frost but the cold winds will set them back and as always, whenever I'm up at the beds, you know, I try to be ever vigilant about weeds. I did mention in our weed video that grasses will now be starting to push their way through. So we'll take that out and any little weed that I see, to say bend no dig, we don't have many. But just by keeping on top of them, that'll stop them setting their seed and spreading a whole load more and causing you more problems in the future, especially when you need to re-sow later on in the year, because you've got to clear the ground first before you can put your next plantings in. As I said in that video, you know, just because we're no dig, we're not immune to weeds. They can come in from anywhere, from any compost that I may buy in, any compost that I make that I haven't quite made hot enough. And yeah, so just by keeping on top of them, Always keep them a bucket by you. Learned that trick from the great Charles Dowding, watching his videos, he's always got a bucket with him. And it's something that I always do myself now is to keep that bucket with me. So as and when I see the odd weed, I can pull it out and straight into the bucket. So you can see the onions are coming on well. They're looking really good. And uh, in the next couple of weeks or so, this uh, fleece cover can come off and they can grow away happily. You can see here the uh, shallots are doing really really well and I think I said at the time when I planted these that these will split up into you know bunches of six, seven, eight, sometimes even ten. And you can see they've now done this. You can see all the individual clusters that it's going to make. And so from that one bulb you know there's going to be plenty of shallots and that's the great thing about growing shallots not only do they taste good but it's a good bang for your buck so as usual here's a little weed here there's another one here so let's have him out my bucket is just the other side of the camera at the moment so i can't quite get to that you can also see here that the garlic is doing really well that's looking good and healthy um, really really pleased with that so Hopefully we get a good harvest from that later on in the year in June. And then we come to one of the crops that is cropping for us now, which is some lovely spinach. And that's producing really lovely leaves. And we just come along and take a harvest off each plant. And then we can come back three or four or five days time. And we can have another lovely harvest of some fresh spinach. Here we are back in the 
bed where we grow our soft fruit or the majority of it. Um, and if you remember, we did a whole video how we've turned this over to new dig. Um, we planted some new strawberries. You see, they've taken really well. They're actually sending out some nice new leaves. So I am quite confident that they've taken nicely and uh, uh, whether we get a uh, harvest from it this year, I don't know, but we shall see and we shall film that anyway for you. And then if you look at these, these are the canes from our summer fruiting raspberries and uh, they're now starting to sprout. This is such a wonderful time of the year because you can see that everything's come back into life again and it's not going to be long before we're going to be enjoying these lovely fruits. And on the other side, these are the autumn fruiting raspberries. They're now starting to push their way through. And of course they'll be behind those. These will give a harvest from sort of late June, July, August. And then from August, these take over through August, September, and if the weather is kind to us, even into November. And then we didn't really talk much about this the last time we were here, but this is our blackberry. So I don't know if you're watching Michael over there in Galston, but this is a thornless blackberry. Um, and as I said to you in my comment that I sent to you, um, it really does grow quite big. We've cut these down at the top. That was done at um, the back end of last year but it won't be long before these start to really grow and push their way along. You can see it's already coming back into growth and it's sending its new shoots out. And then what will happen is as the year goes on, um, it will start to push new uh, stems out. And what we should do is we should push those over to one side and tie them up over there to carry on growing and they will carry next year's fruit. So everything you see here, which is in this fan shape, that's what we're going to get a harvest from this year. But as it sends its new stems out, probably within the next month or so, we we'll say we should push those to one side, some on that side, some on that side, and we should tie them up there so that we can then identify which are the new stems which will carry our fruit for next year. Now in this small plot here, you often see me sitting on that seat in front of the lion, um, but behind us, um, we do have these fruit bushes and we have some gooseberries. There's a gooseberry plant there and one just behind the chair. They're now springing back into life. I've had a little clip, but they're probably going to need, in my opinion, a slightly more severe clip <laughs> when we get to the end of this growing season. They are starting to fill out now and get quite, uh, quite large. And we haven't done this before and we will film this when we do it later on this year but this dark wood is the older wood um, and that's some of the stuff that just needs to be pruned out and you just reduce each stem by a third and yeah it just helps to keep the bush in shape try to create a goblet shape um, you can see I have a little bit of work to do here with this but this plant and the plant in front it's now coming up to being three years old and that's the time when you really want to be um, starting to prune these. These are relatively new bushes. And right in the middle, this is a black currant. We inherited this. This is not something we planted, but it was huge and everywhere when we first moved here a few years back. And over the years, we've reduced it bit by bit, taking out bits and it's thrown out new stems. And oh, look at that. Can you get that on there? There's a, there's a ladybird, right? Well, it's been hibernating there, but look at that look. You can do your job, Mrs. Ladybird. Keep those aphids off there. And so, yeah, you can see it's, uh, it, the leaves are now starting to come out and actually these are holding the blossom. That's not going to be long before that comes out. Hopefully, when they come out we don't get a really hard frost because we don't want those destroyed and that's one of the things that can happen that once these come into blossom if you suddenly have really awful weather and it's you know really hard frost it can really decimate the crop that you expect to get for the coming season but like everything with gardening you know it's you take your chances this is it's time to do it you can't stop it 
and we're always reliant on the weather above. So I hope you've enjoyed looking around our vegetable plot and our fruit plots and got a few ideas and you understand where we're up to and what we're doing. Please let us know in the comments below where you are with your plots and what's in the ground, what's coming into blossom, um, what you're planting. It is very early spring here in Norfolk in the UK. It's only the very beginning of April, but there is lots happening. It is happening happens every year it's really quite magical now we would love you to subscribe to our channel and if you've enjoyed this and you want to see future episodes don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification button so that you'll be informed whenever we upload a video but until the next time take care <laughs>